Hey guys and welcome back. Well, today we're going to be doing something very, very special and I'm really excited about it. And uh, you know, that takes a lot for me to get excited, trust me. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to do a full review of the BenQ SW240 monitor. Now, what's so special about it? Well, it's a, a professional grade 10-bit color monitor. And uh, you know, as a digital artist and photographer, uh, for me, color is everything. I mean, it's going to help me to step up my game, and it's going to help me to uh, do that for my clients as well. So it's pretty important. Now, I'm going to be doing a full in-depth review. I've seen videos online where people talk about, you know, how pretty it is and how cool it is. But that's not really the point, is it? I mean, you know, what is 10-bit? What is it used for? Why would you get one? Why wouldn't you get one, right? What hardware do you need to support a 10-bit monitor? So we're going to do the whole nine yards, okay? Let's jump in. Here we go. All right, guys, let's get started on this guy. So the BenQ SW240 professional grade 10 bit color monitor. That's a whole mouthful. OK, now um, it's sometimes referred to as a professional photography monitor. And uh, I agree with that um, to an extent because I'm a photographer and a digital artist. And for me, the color is important. Even in 3D, when I do my renders or have to match colors for a client, uh, getting the colors right is equally important in uh, both areas. So for me, uh, I'm going to refer to it as a color um, ha color hardware, if you will. Okay, And that's one of the reasons why I'm sharing it on both of my channels. Now, let's get the technical stuff out of the way first. Okay, So if we look at the input-output and we look at the connectivity, um, you can connect the screen to your system using the, um, the HDMI port. You can use the DVI port or the display port. Uh, the display port port okay uh, cables are provided and there is also uh, one upstream usb 3.1 and two downstream and if you don't know what that means um, uh, you see that little blue thing uh, on the picture there uh, a cable runs from there to your computer and that allows you to use the other uh, usb ports that are on the side of the screen there okay and then it has a headphone jack now, this system is compatible with uh, Windows 7, 8, 8.1, and Windows 10, and also Mac, uh, which is uh, pretty important, I would say. And if you look at the accessories, as far as what comes with uh, the screen, um, the hood, uh, obviously, uh, pretty important. The CD, the CD uh, mainly has manuals in a bunch of different languages. And it has the uh, display driver that you need to uh, properly install it. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. You just go into your um, configuration, and then you select your uh, screen. You uh, update the uh, the program, the driver, and then you point to the CD, and you're all set. Okay, it comes with an individual calibration report, which is kind of cool. So you can see that um, the BNQ uh, or BenQ. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. They put it through uh, its paces and all the details can be read there, okay? And then of course, uh, cables. Mini display port, the display port cable, 1.8 meters, uh, DVI cable, the USB cable for uh, upstream and downstream and so forth. So everything ready to go. Now, how you hook up the screen and what cable you're using kind of depends on what video card you're using, okay? And I'll get into that later, but keep in mind that when it comes to uh, setting that up, there are a couple of things you need to know before you're ready, right? Now, uh, that's that. Uh, if we look at the panel itself, it's um, a 24.1-inch uh, LCD screen with an aspect ratio of 16 to 10. Now, 16 to 10 is somewhat different than what we're used to. Uh, same with the resolution there, 1920 by 1200. But uh, so far, it worked out for me quite well. Now, the backlight uh, setup is LED, and it displays 1.07 billion colors. And that's a billion, not million, OK? And that is one of the main reasons why I wanted this uh, screen, and one of the main reasons that we're talking about the screen, OK? As far as the color gamut, 99% Adobe RGB and 100% sRGB. Now, the uh, Adobe RGB range is bigger than the sRGB range, and it kind of uh, depends on whether you are going to be uh, creating images for screen use or for printing, but we'll get into that, okay? So uh, let's uh, talk about the most important thing here, 10-bit monitor, okay? 
So you're probably going to say, okay, so I know about bytes and megabytes and gigabytes and terabytes, so 10-bit, that's not so much, is it? Well, no, that is not it at all. And I'll uh, try to explain this in kind of a non-technical way, but hopefully you can, uh, you know, follow that. Uh, the way to see this is if you take one bit, okay? Now, one bit is, for example, let's say a light bulb. Now, a light bulb can be on or off. So if it's on, it's a one. If it's off, it's a zero, the binary system, okay? So one bit basically has two um, phases it can be in, on or off. So two options. So one bit is two options, basically, okay? So if you follow that line of thought, then if you got two bits, then it's okay. So each has two options. So that's two times two. So you got four options. Now, if you would uh, put that on something from uh, black being out to white being on, you would have uh, black, you would have dark gray, light gray and white. So these four options, um, you know, comes to two bit. So four bit, you would say, okay, so that's uh, two times two. Well, it's two times two times two times two, okay? Because it's two to the fourth power. That's how you need to read this. So based on the image you're looking right here, you can see that when that level of, when that bit level goes up, you see that the, the gray levels in this image go up as well. And instead of having that gradient where you see those blocks of black going towards white, it becomes smoother and smoother. Now, the way 10 bit works is it's two to the 10th power. So two times two, 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 and so forth, which is 1024 levels of gray. Okay, so 1024 shades of gray, if you will, all right. Now, that's all nice and everything, but it's not a gray monitor, is it? It's a color monitor, okay? So why are we talking about that? Well, typically a color monitor has three main channels. Well, technically four, there's an alpha channel, but we're gonna forget about that for now, okay? Now, if you take red, green, and blue, and you take several combinations of these three colors, you can basically create any color you want, okay? As you can see in this example here. So in the gray example there, we had 1,024 variations. Well, if you get three channels, then you got 1,024 times 1,024 times 1,024, which is 1 1.07 billion colors, right? And again, that's a billion, not million, right? Now, um, if you look at an 8-bit channel, an 8-bit channel is only 1.6 million colors. So normally a monitor would be 8-bit and that difference is huge. Okay, so you go out, you buy a monitor 10-bit and you're all set, right? Well, not really. And that's where my complaint comes in, if you will, regarding videos that I've been watching online where people talk about the monitor, but they fail to talk about the fact that in order for you to display something on a 10-bit monitor, you have to have information that contains 10-bit to start with, okay? Now, if we're talking about, let's say, photography, you need to have a camera that will capture images in 10-bit or higher. Now, luckily, most uh, DSLR cameras nowadays are at the very least something like 14.7-bit. So you're, you're good there. And if you're not 100% sure, just uh, look it up online. Uh, but typically, that shouldn't be a problem at all. Now, more importantly, though, uh, what about your video card? So let's say you took a picture or you did a 3D render or whatever, and you are pretty confident that it's 10-bit, uh, but you have a video card that won't display 10-bit. Well, then it's kind of useless to have a 10-bit monitor, right? And like I said, again, in videos that I look at, people don't talk about that. Now, uh, be very, very careful when you consider getting a 10-bit monitor to make absolutely sure that your video card supports what you want to do with it, okay? You got specific software that works with DirectX or OpenGL. You got Quadro cards. You got NVIDIA cards, uh, you know, that uh, like the GeForce ones. Which ones suit your uh, purpose? So don't go out, buy the monitor, find out that your video card is not supporting it and have to go out and spend a lot more money, okay? Unless you get a lot of money, All right? Okay, so that's that. So hopefully you understand how that works, okay? Now, um, why would you get one? Kind of an important question. And it's interesting that in all the videos that I looked, 
I uh, looked at, nobody talked about this. Why would you want a 10-bit monitor, okay? So you get to see 1.07 billion colors, okay? Who cares? Well, for example, your customers care. Let's say you are asked to do a 3D model of a Coke can or you're a photographer and you're doing product photography. It kind of helps when you get the customer's product in the right color. Now, the thing is, when you are working on your screen, right, your reference is the colors you have. And if you have a choice of two colors of red or you have a choice of 2000 colors of red, big difference, right? And if you come up with a product that doesn't look right and is not calibrated, you can have an unhappy customer. And before you know it, you can have no customers at all. All right. So that's pretty important. Now, what would the second reason be? Let's say you are a, a 3D artist or a painter or, you know, you draw, you paint. I don't know what you do, uh, but you want to have a full spectrum and full range of color. Now, if you have a 10 bit monitor and you're working with the software and, and you know, uh, video cards and whatnot that support that, you have a much, much higher range of color to work from. And uh, that's just a lot of fun because, you know, it's, it's more colors on the palette. Simple as that. OK, so that about that, let's jump into the actual hardware and talk about how that works. OK, here we go. Well, first of all, uh, the way you set up the monitor, you can do it horizontally, vertically, but you can actually even tilt it. And the cool thing is, if you want to mount it on a wall, you can do that too, all right? Now, what's pretty convenient is that you can uh, tilt it forward and backward as well. And if you want to move your screen up or down, it's basically with the touch of one hand that you can do that. There's a, a spring in, uh, in the back there. And if you push on it or pull on it, it will just uh, raise or uh, push down the monitor, okay? Now, uh, what else? Uh, I mentioned earlier that on the side of uh, the monitor, uh, there are two USB ports that are fed with the, uh, the cable that I talked about before. And you also have an SD card um, opening there, okay? So if you have photographs or files that you want to load straight up into your screen, you can do that there, right? So that's all about that. Let's uh, dive into the on-screen display and talk about calibration. All right, guys, and last but not least, the on-screen display. Well, um, this uh, monitor comes with a lot of uh, settings that you can use uh, besides the obvious, like, uh, you know, brightness, contrast, and so forth. You have the option to choose uh, from a number of presets like uh, Adobe RGB, uh, sRGB, black and white, and so forth, uh, but also gamut and whatnot. Now, one thing is really important for you to remember because that's actually something I ran into I hooked everything up and I started my system and I had no image on my screen whatsoever. Now, what I forgot is I used the HDMI cable to connect it to my computer, but on the monitor, you have to select that your input signal is on HDMI and not on DVI or something else. So mine was set to DVI and that's why I didn't see anything, okay? Now, I thought about putting um, some pictures next to each other on my screen to show you the difference and then I realized you probably wouldn't be able to see it anyway because if you don't have the correct video card and monitor or whatnot you will not see the difference so uh, that's kind of unfortunate but for that reason there's no point in doing that okay so uh, what I can say is that um, the, the on-screen display menus are well equipped um, they allow you to do hardware calibration which is extremely important and that basically concludes my review guys now, I'm going to be working with this screen for a while, of course. So if you want to know how that worked out for me, contact me in a month or so, and I will be happy to tell you. Uh, you, know, you can find my details below, my email address and whatnot. And uh, that said, I hope uh, this uh, video helped you on your way to get a better understanding of the SW240 uh, 10-bit monitors in general and whether you need to get one or not. And if you do want to get one, I'll put a link below. If you decide to use that link, you will support my channel at no extra cost to you. Okay. Well, thank you very much for watching and see you guys next time. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe. Okay. See you guys next time. Bye.